Hi, I'm Ashish Mathur. Welcome to a short video on the practical usage of Microsoft Excel's cube functions. In this video, I'd like to discuss with you how you can display data from the grand total column of a pivot table on a stacked pivot chart. So for this and other MS Excel solutions, you may visit my website ashishmathur.com. So here's what the data actually looks like. I have a simple base data sheet with five columns, date of sale, the product sold, the region in which the product was sold, the area, and the value of the product uh, that was sold. So that's the total revenue realized column, column E there. Now, I created a normal pivot table from this base data, as you can see here on the next worksheet. So along the row labels over here, um, I have grouped my dates into months. Along the column labels here, I show the products, and that's the revenue earned by each product in each month. I have further gone and created slicers for two uh, fields, which is region over here and area here. Now, any selection in the slicer causes the pivot table figures to automatically update. And if I click on the clear filter button over here, I get back to the original pivot that I created and started from. Now, I've furthermore gone and created a pivot chart out of this pivot table. So the pivot chart that I created looks something like this where on the x-axis over here, I have the various months, Jan to April. And for each month, there are stacks for the different products that I've sold, along with the data labels over there. Now, one data point that is missing on this pivot chart is the grand total for each, each of the months shown over there. So what I'm expecting to actually see on the pivot chart over here is what's the total for Jan, Feb, March, April, and so on. Now, if I try to actually get the grand total by heading on to pivot chart tools going to design and selecting the select data button over there the moment i click on it the chart data range over there is grayed out thereby not allowing me to extend my selection to include the grand total column of the pivot table so there's no way i can do it by the select button select data uh, button over there if i go to pivot table tools analyze and go to change data source change data source over here takes me back to the base data since there is no grand total column over here, obviously, there's no reselection to be made over here either. So I want to actually solve this problem of being able to show the grand total uh, for each specific month on the pivot chart itself. Now, the only solution that I can think of solving this problem is I copy the pivot table, do a paste special value somewhere down below. And now that this becomes a normal pivot, normal table, I can obviously select all the way till the grand total column and create a chart out of this. This would resolve my problem, but then this would no longer be a dynamic data range. In other words, if I were to change anything in the slicers over here, or if I change anything in the base data sheet, I do not have the facility to right click and refresh my data. So this is a static solution, something which I'm not looking at. Now, while I do want the dynamism to be retained in terms of having my figures update when my slicers change and my base data changes, I would also like to show the grand total column on the pivot chart over here. So I would like to show the grand total um, data from the grand total column on the pivot chart over here. Now here is where I can use a combination of the power pivot and Excel's cube functions to solve this problem. So first and foremost, I go to my base data sheet, select the data over here, head on to power pivot, I click on add to data model and in the power pivot window, first and foremost, I rename my tab as base data and I then want to fetch the month from the date of sale column over here. Now, the reason we have to actually do this is that the pivot table that you create from the power pivot window does not have the grouping feature as, does, uh, as do normal pivot tables. So I'm going to write the um, a power pivot function over here which goes as format and from the base data sheet i want to go to the date of sale column and extract the date of sale in the format of four m's over there which is the month spelled out now once i get the months over here i right click i rename this as month name and now i create a pivot table out of this so I go to the pivot table drop down, choose the first item over there, pivot table. I want to plot the pivot table on a new worksheet. And once the data comes over here, I drag the month name to my row labels, product to my column labels, 
amount over here to the value area section and since I do not need the power pivot window anymore over here I can simply close it uh, let's do some basic formatting as well right click pivot table options I'll uncheck the box for auto fit column width on update and let me just standardize the column widths so that all the numbers can be easily read right click value field settings number format number over here I want to use the thousand separator with no decimals as well okay um, I'll insert a few rows at the top of the pivot table over here so that I have enough space to insert two slicers so I go to pivot table tools options insert slicer there for region as well as for the area there I drag region over here and I'd like to show three regions per row in the slicer window and I do something similar for area as well stack them side by side and let's say I want to show six of them per row in the slicer window there so we're all set just to quickly check whether the result of the power pivot over here is the same as the conventional pivot table I'll just place it right beside it in the first place and just say um, pivot from power pivot tool over here and the grand total is 49590 from the pivot created from the power pivot tool and that number matches with the number here as well okay now I can select any one cell over here head on to pivot table tools and under analyze or options depending upon the excel version that you're using I can click on pivot chart over here but then I would run into the same problem of not being able to show data from the grand total column on the pivot chart for each and every single month okay now here is where excel's cube functions come into play so if I select any one cell within the pivot table and go to pivot table tools options there's something called OLAP tools for me which is activated and under that there is something called convert to formulas so what this actually does is it converts every single cell of the pivot table into individual formulas um, in, into individual cube formulas and since this, this is all be formula driven it will be connected to all my slices and my base data as well now please note that the OLAP tools button is not active when you create a pivot table from your conventional data source so if I go to my normal pivot table, select any one cell inside the pivot table, go to pivot table tools, options, analyze, OLAP tools over there is grayed out for me. So since I've created the pivot from the power pivot window, I can actually have under the OLAP tools the feature of convert to formulas. But before I do so, I'll just select the entire pivot table first. So I'll go to select entire pivot table, control C and control V this. Now I select any one cell over here, I go to pivot table tools, options, OLAP tools, convert to formulas and as you can see now if I select any one cell within the pivot table, I've actually uh, been able to see as to what is the underlying formula that Excel actually uses to create, a, to fetch each of these numbers in the value area section of the pivot table. If I were to argument sake, let's say choose only Calcutta over here. I see the 8278 over here exactly matches with the 8278 over here as well. If I clear the filter, I come back to where I started from. So this has now become, well, close to a normal range for me without the copy paste special values there. Okay, now let's just do some basic formatting on this. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna delete the column labels from there. I'll keep this in bold. So will I keep this in bold over here? And uh, I can, apply a comma formatting and I can do anything else that I really want to over here. Let's just jump on to creating the pivot chart from this. So I'm going to select this data over here all the way till the grand total column and I go to insert and let's create, sorry, so I select this data over here, I go to insert I go to stacked column over there and the chart's way too small so I'm going to right click on this and move it to a worksheet of its own. So I'm going to move the chart to a new worksheet over here and I get something which is quite meaningless actually so it shows me some a few numbers on the x-axis which does not quite make a lot of sense. Okay so let's make some modifications to this chart. I 
let's see what happens when I click to switch rows and columns. Oh, well, it's equally bad actually. So I'm going to switch back to where I started from. I now go to select data. And while the select chart data range over there is correct, I have a problem with these individual entries. So I have to correct for both the legend entries and the horizontal axis labels over here. Let's just first tackle the legend entries over here. So I'm going to click on uh, add over there. I want to add a series name, which is product A, the entries of which should be fetched from this over here. Click on OK. Add yet again, product B and this over here. Add product C, this. Product D as well. I'm gonna add this over here. And last for product E there as well. Okay. So the grand total, let's just quickly check how has that been calculated. So that's coming from cell G5, which is correct, and that's the data. So that's fine for now. Now on the horizontal axis labels, I'd like the months to appear. So I click on edit there and I simply choose this over here, click on OK. Right, so far so good. I right click, I add data labels, add data labels there, add data labels for them individually. Okay. So now that we've got it till here, you'll see the total which is appearing. So let's let's take a look at April. The total is 6456, which appears as 6456 over here. So I'd like the total to appear above these individual stacks for each column. So I'm going to right click here. So rather right click over here and say change chart type and if I go to a combo chart over there, I'll simply say that while everything should be a clustered column, sorry, should be a stacked column, I'd like the grand total to actually be a line chart on the secondary axis there. I click on OK and you can now see I got a 6456, which is the total for April, which matches with the 6456 over here. February is 14166, so that's 14166. Now to make it slightly more visible, I'm going to right click on any one of the grand total data labels. All of them automatically get activated. I go to format data labels and I say I want to play the label position should be above over there. And while I'm on, on this setting, I can obviously go over there and also choose the very fact that I do not want to see any uh, of these lines and markers as well. So I select this over here and uh, I select this here and I simply say I do not want a line. I do not want any marker options. Fill should be no fill there. And um, so far, so good. Now, I'll just increase the font size of this so that it's slightly sort of visible a little better. And, okay, so we have a stack column chart with a grand total figure appearing at the top of every single month column. Just to quickly cross check whether this is working fine or not, if I were to go to my pivot from the pivot chart tool there, and let's say if I were to choose Bangalore, Pune, and Kolkata, uh, the March figure is 18,970 for the total, which is broken up into product A and B over here. So if I see this over here, 18,970, which is broken up into product A and product B there without losing the dynamism in my data. So 
for any changes made to the slicers here or for that matter over here as well since these are all cube formula uh, derived figures they update and the, these figures flow onto the pivot chart over here now one last thing which i may want to share with you over here is the fact that i see a lot of zeros over here which do not make sense i actually want to get rid of these zeros because they just occupy space now i'll just show you how to do it for any one you can repeat the step for the others as well so i'll select any one of these zeros so all the zeros for the same series get activated i do a control one there and here under number i go to category here i choose custom and in the format code i will choose the format as this one for positive numbers this one for negative numbers this one for zeros and this one for blanks so each of the four um, of these different formats are separated by semicolons the first is for positive numbers the next for negative numbers the third for blanks and the last for text entries since i've left the zeros as a empty uh, as, as empty over there it will not display my zeros at all so if i were to click on add over there the zeros would vanish as if there was a zero appearing here earlier which has gone away let's see it for one another one so if i were to choose this zero over here all the other numbers of the same series get activated and i can get on to custom over there select this when i click on add uh, i don't see the effect of it so let's let me try once again i choose that yet again i go to this custom i say add and the zero from there has gone away so you likewise have to do this for these individual series there and this is a one time effort but it's worth the pain because this is now all be dynamic so the next time it's not a zero and it's a number you'll actually be able to hide you'll actually be able to display those numbers if the number is greater than zero and suppress them if this less than zero so hope you enjoyed watching this video on how you can show the figures from the grand total column on a stacked pivot chart thank you very much